Hey guys, welcome back to the multiplayer checkers tutorial. So today we finish the uh, the mechanics of the game. So basically we have your working checker games now. Um, it just works as intended. And uh, we can play locally if we just toggle on something. So if we just go back here, swap the turn every every time we actually end the turn, then we can actually play locally, assuming that you start with the white player here. And that works, everything is fine. We corrected a lot of mistakes. Right now everything should be flawless, so as you can tell, not able to move anything unless it's the killing move. We also covered the double jump, so that's working as well. We also have covered the king. So if I quickly play this game and show it to you, we now have the king piece. And uh, yeah, so that's what we do today. We finish the whole mechanic of the game. And in the next one, we'll start tackling the whole server and client stuff. So guys, uh, stay tuned and let's get started. Alright, so most of the code we're going to be writing today is going to be in the end turn, and the reason is um, we end our turn pretty much every time we move. However, I'd like to cancel this if we manage to kill something, and then we have the opportunity to kill another thing, you know? Like if you have like multiple moves lined up, if you have like a double jump lined up, then uh, you don't really want to end your turn after your first jump. In fact, you're not supposed to be able to because you're forced to move. And also in the end turn, I would like to check if there is anything to promote. So let's start by keeping track of where we landed during the turn. I'll do a int x is equal to end and drag dot x. And let's also uh, cast this as an int because I'll be using this as an int. So y, same thing for the y. And drag dot y. And at this point, we know where we landed. So um, if there is a selected piece, because you know we, we just like doing that check. <laughs> if selected piece is not equal to null, and um, if, say, that selected piece would be white in this case, is white, and that selected piece is not already a king, so is king, is false, but putting the exclamation mark here. So if that piece is white, it's not a king, and y is equal equal to 7, that means one of the white piece just landed, um, one of the white piece just landed at the very end of the board, which means it now becomes a king. So we'll do selected piece dot is king is equal to true. And uh, since my model, uh, my model actually has it. So if you flip it around, you're gonna have like this little king icon. Actually, like, it's uh, my flag, my uh, flag of my province, but doesn't really matter. Um, since it's beneath my object, we'll do a rotate on it. So selected piece of transform dot rotate and let's rotate it by vector 3 dot right times 180 degrees. Okay, so that's only going to work for the white piece now. Else if piece is not white, it's not a king, and y is equal equal to zero, then it's like piece becomes a king and we also flip it. So that's it for the promotion. Promotions now, like I said, we have we have to actually cancel um, our move, not cancel our move, but cancel our end turn if we actually have another move possible. So let's have a look down here. Uh, in between these two calls, I'll actually type in if scan for possible move. Now, scan for possible move returns you a, a full array of all the lists possible. However, I'm feeling like, um, well, we, we're going to have a problem if we just do it like that. The reason I'm saying we're going to have a problem is say that there is a uh, two possibility for a kill and then you just do one and after that turn uh, the piece you just move can't kill another one but you know on the other side of the board you still have that one piece that can kill another um, another enemy piece then you're going to get like a free turn where you can play twice with two different pieces and I don't want that I don't want to be able to like play um, you know do one move here and then take another piece and do another move without ending your turn. So we should check if only the piece that has moved right now has the opportunity to kill another one. And um, in my example, I have my example, but in uh, the, the, the thing I did before making the actual tutorial, what I did is I simply gave this an overload. So the scan for possible move, I gave it an overload that would, um, that would actually check only for one piece. So just private piece scan 
full possible move. And you know what? That's a little bit an error here. Um, it's a list of piece again. So I'm giving out a list of piece after this function call. However, what you get inside of here is uh, some parameters. So you need to know which piece exactly are you moving. And also int x, n, int y. So where is that piece exactly? Since the piece doesn't really know where it's at, as, uh, as stupid as it might seem, the piece just doesn't know. <laughs> All right, so since we're going to get a list out of this, well, first, let's start by feeding it the parameters. The um, the actual piece we send is the selected piece. Now, the x is going to be x in our case, the y is going to be y. And uh, since this is never going to match as a, a boolean, because that's a list, we'll do a dot count. And we'll do is not equal to 0. n has killed. So let's quickly read this again. If it's possible to move something and you've already killed something, let's do a return here. This way, um, we still killed what we had to kill. However, we're never going to call this uh, turn switch here. And we're not going to reset has killed, which is just fine. Um, okay, so now we just need to make this work for only one piece. And that should be fairly straightforward. I'm just going to copy the one um, that we had out here, remove the for loop, and simply do a... Um, if piece at the index x and y is forced to move, if that's the case, then force piece dot add, and we add piece at the index x and y. That should actually do it. Now, is forced to move takes more parameter. What other parameter does it take already? I totally forgot. So, is forced to move. It takes in. Oh yeah, the board itself. So in this case, pieces and also x and y. So is that going to work? I think this is going to work. So let's actually oh, remove that semicolon. That'd be quite useful. And have a look at uh, what we get in the game right now. OK, so let's give this a try now. Um, let's start with the white team. Let's move this say, here. Now, I'm really not that good at checkers. Actually, I, I, I'm quite bad at checkers. But I'm going to try and have some kind of setup where um, I can actually test this out. The double jump, I mean. So please bear with me if I if I look like I suck at this game. I do suck at this game, that's why. And we are currently lining up for a double jump right here. I'm going to do it with the black piece. Um, let's move this here. And now we should be set up for a double jump. With this piece here, we should be able to jump here, then here. So let's try this out. We're able, well, first right now, let's check. We're only able to move this one, and we can also move this one for a double jump. That would also count. So let's do this. Is it still our turn? Yes, it's still our turn. And then we're going to move here. Is it still our turn? It should not be our turn anymore. For some reason, it seems like, oh, no, actually, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's just a scan for possible move who uh, got messed up a little bit. Now we have to move white. And here we go. Okay, the, the other thing I'd like to test out is um, the king, being able to turn into a king. And right now, I was trying to move this, couldn't, because this one has a double jump to do. So we're going to take care of business first. Sure, let's go here. All right, so I should be able to reach both hands right now. This one should flip. And as you can tell, it did flip. We have the icon now. Um, let's go back here. This one also flipped. And we should now be able to move them in both directions. So this one was working. Let's go back to the white. And this one was also working. Cool. Now, what if I actually try to land a kill with those pieces here? And uh, for some reason, oh, I'm not able to move because this one has uh, a kill in sight. So let's actually put that here and try to force a scenario where um, you would kill in reverse. So basically, let me go check that out. Okay, so this one has to kill. Again, I messed up. And here we go. So at this point, so at this point, you should not be able to pick any pieces but the king. And as you can tell, can't drag these, can only drag the king, and it goes back to this position. And it did land a kill as well. Um, for some reason, the turns they don't work. As you can tell, I can like play this piece as much as I as I want. And I think it goes for every single piece. So yeah, uh, we don't have a function that determines if it's my turn or not. Which, uh, I mean, we, we kind of made it that way at first because we didn't implement the multiplayer. But let's go ahead and just do it right now. 
So that seems to work, that seems to work. Let's actually check in the try move, not in try move, in the update. If it is my turn, so I left it here and I never actually coded the thing. So I'll do an if up here and I'll check for the player's color. So if it's white, uh, and I'll do that in the ternary operator. So if it's white, then we're going to return is white turn. Else is not white turn. And that should actually cover the bug we had. And I think it's actually going to end our uh, single player session. I mean, we, we don't have to do any single player stuff anymore at this point. So as you can tell, I can't move this twice. have to move a white piece absolutely and we still have this little bug where uh, we don't scan every time I don't think we do right now but the game is uh, is played super smoothly now compared to um, like one episode ago or two episode ago this is really clean and um, I think we are pretty much ready to start doing the multiplayer guys oh wait yeah we have to do the uh, check victory function right now it's being called um, every every single turn, but we're never really checking for anything. And let's also do a private void victory down here with a boolean um, is white. So we'll know which player wins with that boolean. Okay, so check victory. We're simply going to check something every frame. If uh, we have a condition that matches, then we're going to go ahead and just uh, call it victory. So let's do something really simple. Why not var pieces is equal to find object of type find all the object of type piece, put them in an array. What kind of array is it going to be? It's going to be a pieces array. Okay, and then we'll do something like bool has white is equal to false and also has black is also equal to false. At this point, I am going to like iterate through all the pieces we have. So for int i is equal to zero, as long as smaller than pieces dot length and uh, <laughs> And that's a little bit weird. Let's actually rename that so we don't get any uh, naming problem. I'm going to name this PS for pieces. So pieces dot uh, length in this case, and it doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to know it's an array for some reason. Oh, weird. So um, this is only finding one object. Let's do find objects with an S. At this point, it knows that it should be an array, and we call we can actually call dot length. So um, we iterate through that little custom array we just made here and then we'll do if pieces or actually if ps at index i is white we're gonna say has white is equal to true and else if it's not white that means has black is equal to true this way we're going to iterate through everything if there is no white pieces it's simply going to say uh, has white is equal to false at this point we know that uh, the black player won because all the, the white pieces are gone. So if has white is negative, victory false. And if um, has black is false, then victory is uh, true. And in here for now, I'll just do a simple debug.log. So if it's white, uh, let's say debug.log. Oops. white team has one else black team has one alright so that's going to conclude it for the uh, single player part if you just wanted to make a checker games locally then you know you simply have to swap the uh, player side every turn so I don't know why I didn't do that while we were actually testing out we could have done something really simple, so something ar among um, these lines here is white is equal to is not white. And this would have worked like locally. This game can now work locally. So you start, you are the white player, and then it's somebody else's turn every time. I can't move this because I have to kill, and we just move on like that. So um, this is how you can turn it into a local game, but starting the next episode, we're going to start working on the actual server and how to make this like a multiplayer game over an actual network. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for leaving likes, leaving comments, all that kind of stuff. Checking out the Patreon page, checking out the website if you'd like to download some asset or stuff like that. I'm just I'm still working on like putting out stuff, um, more artistic stuff on the website. But it takes longer than I um, actually expected to make some art 
So, other than that, please uh, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.